Happy Halloween! Welcome traders to this video where I'm trying to be a silly motherfucker, but I can't be as silly as some other people I know out there. Anyway, I'm gonna pass the hat before the video starts. Alright, give me a nice tip, a virtual tip if you guys enjoy this content. Anyways, what's going on? My name is Chris at Virtual Trading here, and in this video I'm gonna show you guys how to make a custom chart in Sierra Chart to chart basically anything you want. You can use it to chart anything you want. I've used it to chart my equity curve for a futures trading account. I think this is really, really interesting. I think that this can help a lot of traders to look deeper into your trading and basically see your own patterns. I'm sure that firms use this. They analyze the equity curve to you know, see how their traders are performing and when they're likely to you know, be more likely to have a losing trade or maybe they're, uh, they're analyzing certain patterns in their trading and all that. So hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Let's go over to the screen, which is right in front of me. All right, what's going on guys? Here's the equity curve in this future trading account for the last few months here. As you can see, summer was pretty quiet. I was working on algo stuff, most of it, and then we started to do pretty decently um, this one big crude oil trade pretty much brought the account up and then ever since then we were just kind of coasting. Now, lately, uh, as you can see here, the volatility in our equity curve has been increasing. This is one of my models that I've created for uh, volatility. It's one that I use in my trading myself. I'm not, I don't have any videos explaining how that works. Unfortunately, there never will be a video explaining how that works. That's fine. Um, so the first thing is you're looking at an equity curve. Honestly, guys, you're lucky if you see any other trader share this with you, um, which is their equity curve of their actual live trading account. And I'm full disclosure with you guys. You can see here, I've had a bit of a choppy last two months here, which is absolutely okay. I believe I've learned a lot in these two months. Actually, I think that um, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, inventing things, but I'm, I'm a lot more confident than I've ever been in my trading at this point. Um, and I learned a lot this week in particular. I had a couple of aha moments, uh, really special aha moments regarding, um, you know, my system and method and my overall process around my trading and things I need to improve on. Obviously, I have a lot of work to do still. And, uh, you know, taking the time to make this video takes time away from that work and other things I'd rather be doing, like shredding guitar strings, which is fine. Uh, but I still want to make this video to potentially help you guys out there and show you how hard trading is and basically, you know, give you guys some methods to improve yourselves. So stay till the end of the video if you want to learn how to make a chart for your equity curve or basically a chart for anything to, you know, put your own custom indicators on in Sierra chart. And so as you can see recently here, the volatility has been increasing in my equity curve. That's because I've been taking more risk, trading treasuries, trading two contracts sometimes. And um, I'll be honest with you, these days here, this day for sure, I was losing money trading two contracts. And I remember very well this day right here was a day that I was trying to trade and the volatility was just non-existent and I was forcing trades upon the market. I may have forced a trade and then I tried it a second time and I lost both times. And you know, that happens. Honestly, it's not the end of the world. One thing I learned about that day is that, um, well, this is sort of cumulative knowledge, but one thing I know for a fact about my system is that it doesn't work unless there's inefficiencies to be captured in the market, unless there's actual volatility, you know, unless there's actually price action. And one thing about the markets that I trade, which is five-year treasuries most of the time in the morning, is that sometimes there's no inefficiencies to be captured. Sometimes there is a lot. Sometimes it's basically like um, a spur of the moment, like basically you have about 10 to 30 to minutes, an hour if you're lucky, of volatility. Um, where you can actually capture some seriously good inefficiencies where those are what I consider the A plus setups anyways. So my system works best in medium volatility at least. And for medium volatility for the five years, at least anything above four ticks. Um, so pretty, you know, reasonable. I could trade in three ticks too. Three ticks is okay, but I want to see three to four to five kind of fluctuating within that range. Uh, anything below that, and I don't think it's worth it anymore, to be honest. I have to be seeking out markets that have more inefficiencies when treasuries have no volatility. So definitely very important. Now let's talk a little bit about this week. So one thing about the equity curve that's really interesting is that you can go in and read into your patterns, into your habits, into your tendencies, into your emotional buildups and all that. So this is one thing here. We have Monday right here, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And now I remember very clearly Monday there was no volatility to be had. I didn't even place a trade. Tuesday, there was barely any volatility. I may have traded even though the volatility was very low. And then Wednesday was a similar scenario. Early in the morning, there was no volatility and then the volatility came a little later and at that time I wasn't trading. And then we have Thursday. So one thing I do wanna say is that I believe that I'm still a bit too emotional and I'm working right now on various solutions that I'm creating to mitigate emotion in short-term trading. One of the ways of doing that is using sample sets in your trading. This is a pretty popular idea, but whatever strategies you're working with, 
you know, you want to be looking at your trades and sample sets clearly. So that way you can have that confidence that you're not emotionally affected because things like this can happen. You can have two, three, four break even days in a row, days where the market's dry. You might have tried a trade, nothing's working, but you have to know that in the long run, if your system is working, it's working and you just have to continue to have that confidence in it. And you have to just basically remind yourself of these things constantly. So what I what happened to me this week was I definitely let that frustration and anger get to me. By the time we were Thursday, Okay, the first trade of the day was a loser. And then the second trade of the day was a big winner. And I remember feeling very flustered after that winner. Um, and then after that, we had a series of trades, which were okay trades, but none of them followed through. And they all ended up in tiny losses. I believe I managed those trades very well. I think that they were a plus setups, but the just the general context didn't prevent them to follow through. Basically, they didn't follow through. So I ended up with tiny losses on those, which was good from a management standpoint. Um, but the thing is, what wasn't good was I definitely believe that I let my frustration get to me. And if you hear my tone in my voice um, during my screen recording of that particular day, Thursday of this week here, we're at the end of October, I was really pissed. And by the time I was taking a couple of those two tick losses, I was I was very frustrated. And what I failed to realize is that I think I had some frustration build up from the last few days too. So what I'm going to be looking out for is certain patterns like this in my equity curve where I'm starting to see, okay, I might have had a choppy day. Maybe it was dry, nothing there. And I left and then come back, came back the next day and it was the same sort of scenario. And basically I'm having, you know, two, three days in a row without hitting any setups. And this could either be due to a lack of discipline of not, you know, actually hitting the setup or not being there for the setups. That's a different problem or it could be due to simply there is no setup to be had, right? And I'm not uh, shopping around enough in um, in any markets. I'm only looking at one market and there's no setups in those markets because there's no inefficiencies to be captured. And the last trade of Thursday here was what pretty much made me hit my drawdown limit. Basically, that was the one trade and I allocated, I guess you could say I allocated nearly all of my drawdown to that trade and it ended up losing um, and I shouldn't have done that. And I did it because I was frustrated. I didn't do it because it was an A plus setup because it wasn't. And it was something I was overlooking in that particular trade on Thursday. Now, yeah, that trade on Thursday was a trade that gave me a big aha moment and something just clicked. And I don't know if you guys know what I mean by that, but you know, you have all this knowledge and all this experience, but then every now and then you get these moments where you're like, you know what? A, B, and C go together, and it's like you almost like put a puzzle piece together, and it's like, whoa, I just unlocked a new like bank of knowledge. Um, and that trade in particular, the last trade on Thursday that made me hit my drawdown, when I looked back at it and sat there and looked at the context and everything, I realized that, whoa, I was missing something. And then something just clicked, and I made a huge realization about how the futures markets work anyways. And I don't want to say that's correlated to what happened on Friday, but basically what happened on Friday, I wasn't even planning to trade Friday morning. I, I wasn't planning at all to trade. In fact, I was most probably going to take the day off completely. I slept in a little longer on Friday. I didn't even have an alarm. I might have got up probably 30, 40 minutes uh, later than I normally do on Friday morning. And I opened the market and we have volatility. And I mean, I know my setup well enough that I know how to trade it. You know, like I can trade it if there's a setup there. It's not like I'm a noob or anything that I'm just gonna be gambling. I know my setups. And what I saw on Friday is that there was pretty good price action. So I just started placing trades and I was only trading one contract. And I, the first trade of the day was a loss. And then I had four winners in a row, well, three long scalps to the long side. And then one nice short trade, a five tick winner that, you know, was a nice comeback. I thought it was a great comeback. For me, that tells me that you need to be there every single day. You know, you can't be taking days off just because you're you're not feeling it or whatever. You just have to you just have to be there. If you know your setup, you know your volatility, you know everything. You just have to be there. The mistake I made this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, is I over traded or I tried to trade during low volatility. And I know very well my system doesn't work during you know two ticks volatility in the five year. Okay. All right, guys, that's a bit of insight into this uh, last few days of action here. I'm very confident that we are going to do very well going through November. I have a lot of work to do. I'd like to wish you guys a great end of the quarter as well. I don't know how many more videos we're going to be making lately because I've been very busy. So anyways, enjoy the next part of the video. So let's show you how to plot this equity curve right now. Happy Halloween if you're watching this on Halloween. <laughs> okay, anyways, chart settings. This is how you do it. You need to create a custom symbol. So I've created a custom symbol called account balance. The way you do it is like this. Um, so I went to the chart settings, chart, and then chart settings. Then go down to 
edit the global symbol settings. And you could probably also get here from global settings, but this is one way of getting there. So edit global symbol settings. And then over here, you want to create a new symbol. I've already created a new symbol called account balance, account one, that's another one I created. So you basically click here, new, and then you create the new symbol right here and just name it whatever you want. Hello, that's gonna be the name of my symbol, but you should probably name it account balance or whatever it is that you will be charting with this symbol. It could be anything, that's why it's pretty interesting. And you can use the power of Sierra chart. That's the reason why I want to do this in Sierra chart because you know, the stuff people do in Sierra chart is insane. You can literally do anything. Whatever else you got going on, kind of complex models where you know one calculations are being derived from other ones, you can use that and apply that to whatever it is that you're charting. And that's why I believe it's extremely powerful. And that's why I did it here. So here's our new symbol, it's called hello. And basically you can set the symbol settings. You have to set them right here. Um, so you can set the price display format, the tick size if you want. And uh, one thing I would recommend is putting them into a category. So normally with custom symbols, I just put them into a, a category called custom symbols. That way you can actually find them when you go into your find symbol menu in Sierra chart. So in the category you would put in here custom symbols and that would be your new new category for custom symbols. And then if there's any other things that you wanna add here, like volume multipliers or that, I don't really think you need to mess with that. Personally, I didn't mess with any anything else. Uh, and you can always go back and change them later if you need to. So that's pretty much how you create a custom symbol. You select okay when you're done with that. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to just load in that symbol to your chart. So in this case, I've loaded in the symbol account balance, but in this case, I'll load in the symbol hello, because that's our new symbol we created. And what you're essentially going to see once you load in the symbol is a blank chart like this. There's nothing here because there's no data here. So what I'm gonna do to start is I'm going to change this chart to a one day time frame, And the reason I'm gonna do that is because in Sierra chart, there are two types of data files. There's intraday data files, which are normally tick by tick data. And then there are the daily chart files or the historical data files, which are much smaller in file size and they have much less data to them because the only parameters they have are these ones, the date, the open, high, low, and close, volume and open interest. Those are the only parameters that you can change for the historical data files. So that's why I think this is easier if you use that. Now, of course, if you use an intraday file, maybe you could even go even more in depth and look at like the intraday PL swings if you're taking like, you know, really high frequency amounts of trades. But this is more for like day traders that are just kind of looking for your equity curve over a long period of time. And this is also a manual way of doing it, right? So, you know, if you don't know how to code or anything, you don't need to know how to code to do this. You just need to type in the values um, of your account balances, okay? So this is how you're gonna do that. So the next thing you do once you have your chart, which is nothing, there's nothing there, is you set it to a one day chart by going one D enter. And again, there's nothing there. So you do edit and then you select edit data historical chart. And you're going to get open a text file like this in your text editor, like this one, notepad plus plus, which is a text editor. And you can see here the name of the file is hello.dly. DLY means that it's a historical data file. So then what you do at this point is you need to start putting in the values. So I will start by essentially putting in some values. So what I'll do is I'll just copy the last four days of my um, other file into here because I don't feel like typing. So I'll just copy and paste them. And then one other thing you need to know about this is that at the end of the file, you need to leave an extra empty line or else the file will not work, okay? So now that you're done with that, you do control S to save it. And I'm gonna show you a few uh, text editing keyboard shortcuts, which are very helpful by the way, in the next section here. So once, you're, once you've saved it, you go into your chart and then you will do edit, reload and recalculate. And sometimes it will do it after a few seconds automatically. And then what you will essentially have, you might have to recenter the price scale by double clicking on it. So now you have these new chart bars. So there's, you know, we have four bars of the chart that we've essentially added. Okay, so let's create a new bar on the chart after the bar that we have there. The first thing I'll do is I'll show you how to duplicate a line. It's very easy. It's control D when you're selected on a line. So control D duplicates the line that you're currently on. Next, because I don't like using the mouse that much because my mouse is starting to go, it's not working very well with the click and drag anymore. So if that's happening to you, get used to using your keyboard for text editing. It's actually probably even faster than using the mouse. It's like this. So when you hold the control key and you use your left and right arrow keys, you skip past more characters like this. And that's handy if you need to get from one side of the file to the other very quickly like that. So I'm holding control and I'm going with the left and right arrow key. The other thing is, is if you hold control and shift at the same time, and you use the arrow key, now you go into highlight mode. So you can highlight a value like that. And then if you want, you can copy it or you can type right over it. 
um, copy it, for example, and then go over to the next one and then highlight it and then do control V, which would paste it. And then you would essentially paste in that value there. So let's go over to the date and let's change the date to October 31st because happy Halloween. <laughs> Actually, so let's change the opening price of this bar to be the closing price of the previous bar. So if we look closely there, the closing price of the previous bar was 2361.78. So what I can do is just highlight that bar and, and then go ahead and highlight this and then paste that in. That's the first way of doing it. Next thing is we wanna set the other value. So let's say the high of this new bar, let's say we want it to be 3000, right? So that's the high of our bar. The low of our bar, let's say we drew down on the session, we're gonna make it 2000. And then where we closed, basically it's going to be 2750. Okay, so what this essentially means here is that we opened here, we potentially had a drawdown, and then we really ran up, and then we had some more trades, and then our PL consolidated back down to 2750. The last two numbers, I'll explain to you what I do with these. So with the volume, I just put in one because that's kind of an experiment, and you can, you know, it's interesting because you can put in a volume profile to see your equity curve that way too, which is just an experiment. And then for the open interest, that's where I'm putting in the number of trades that I've taken for the session, um, which is interesting to see sometimes if you can uh, see where you have more trades or less trades relative to what you're doing and all that. So let's say we had 10 trades just for an example. So I will go ahead and save the file and then I'll go here and recalculate it. And we have a new chart bar that has appeared right there where it's basically the values that we put in, right? So the high of it is 3000, the close of it is 2750. There's our new bar. So that's what you essentially have to do. You have to put in the bars one by one and that's how you chart out your equity curve or chart out anything, right guys? Hope this video helped you. I'm glad to provide you guys content like this. I hope you enjoyed the content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.